Hi, welcome back. So far in these videos, we've been looking at how we can upgrade an ASP.NET MVC app to ASP.NET Core and .NET 7. But something that I wanted to make sure to touch on is how we deal with WCF services, because that's another scenario that comes up a lot. It doesn't come up in our eShop sample, so we haven't run into it going through the eShop migration. But for folks who might have a WCF dependency, I wanted to make sure we cover that. Now, if you're talking about a WCF client dependency, that's pretty straightforward because a large portion of the WCF client surface area is already available on .NET 7 and on .NET 6. So you can take those applications and upgrade them relatively straightforward. Uh, we do have a tool, uh, the .NET Service Util tool, which is an, up, uh, an updated version of the Service Util tool that'll help you to create clients. But outside of maybe using that tool to recreate some client code that was auto-generated, everything should more or less move over okay if you are upgrading a WCF client. What we're going to talk about today is upgrading a WCF app that has server components, like a service host. And for that, it gets a little bit trickier because out of the box, .NET 7 doesn't have support for server-side WCF APIs. So there's a few things you can do in that scenario. One would be to revisit your architecture and see if maybe if it's a simple enough communication protocol that you could just replace it with, say, Web API and do HTTP communication. That's one option. You could look at re-architecting using gRPC, which is a modern um, RPC framework that we recommend uh, when you're using .NET 7. But in some scenarios, you may have a large dependency on WCF that's difficult to move away from in the short term, or maybe you have clients that depend on that particular SOAP protocol. In those scenarios, there's a uh, community project called Core WCF that's looking to take the WCF surface area that worked on .NET Framework and make it work on .NET 6, .NET 7, all the way back to .NET Core 3.1 and even on .NET Framework. And so for scenarios where you have a server-side WCF dependency that you can't easily get away from, we're now recommending Core WCF as an option for moving forward onto .NET 7. Uh, Core WCF uh, has a lot of contributors at Microsoft as well as other companies, and we've recently announced that Core WCF will receive official support from Microsoft support channels if you run into an issue in production. So if you have an app and you're able to get it working with Core WCF, you can use that with confidence knowing that when you go into production, if something were to go wrong or some update breaks something, you can get support from Microsoft the same way you would for anything that came inbox with .NET 7. So I just wanted to call that out. But uh, more than that, we also have some tooling now. I'm going to bring on to, the, to this video uh, my friend Simona, who has been working on extending Upgrade Assistant to actually have the ability to take an app with a server-side WCF dependency and make it work with Core WCF. So uh, Simona, hello. Thank you for joining me. Yeah, of course. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Simona, and I'm a summer intern on the .NET Fundamentals team. And my project has been providing to fill this gap between Core WCF and Upgrade Assistant. So customers can directly upgrade their WCF project on .NET Framework to use Core WCF on .NET 6. And now I'm going to show a demo on BinTrader. Now we'll Perfect. Yeah, go ahead and get your screens up. set up and we'll share that. Yes, yeah, so far we've been going through that eShop sample, but like I said, that doesn't cover every scenario. So Simona's got the, the Bean Trader sample, which is another sample she'll introduce to you. And we're going to use that to show you how to upgrade to Core WCF uh, using Upgrade Assistant. So, all right, there you go, Simona. Go ahead and take it away. Yeah, so now I'll first pull up the Upgrade Assistant because it takes a bit to load, and then I'll explain the bin trader uh, sample. So this is an interesting app that uh, help users to trade different types of bins, and we'll work on updating the server part of it. So as you can see, currently it's on .NET Framework, and in the file, it's using system.service model, service host, and similarly, in the config file, it's also referencing system.service model. And all those components are legacies from WCF that are not supported on .NET 6 anymore. And now we'll use the upgrade assistant tool to update this project. Okay. Yeah, this is already up. And here is the upgrade assistant interface. And it's a command line tool that provides users a very interactive experience to update their project. So first, 
as we can see, it says loaded nine extensions. And one of those is our WCF updater, which is, which is a default extension for all users. And we'll start with select an entry point. So I'll type in one to apply the step, and then we'll work with our Bing Trader server. So I type in three. So through this kind of interactions, user know what changes have been made to their project directly. Just like the project. And the Bing Trader server is dependent on the Bing Trader comments, but I have completed that upgrade beforehand. So we can start with the server. Now the upgrade assistant tells us a list of steps this project needs to go through to fully update on the Net6, such as backup and then convert to SDK, at the target framework, NuGet packages. And here, step seven, we can see this is updating WCF services to use Core WCF, uh, which is also our step. Now we'll go through all the steps before it quickly. Continue. Okay. Now we are removing this system.service model reference, which is outdated. And on this interface, uh, customers will know uh, what changes is gonna happen and they can decide if they wanna apply it or skip it to customize their upgrading experience. Now we are updating the target framework. Great, we are at step seven right now. So before applying the changes for step seven, we'll take a look at the information before it. So here it was initializing this step and then uh, the project says it's applicable for updating and because it detects a code or configuration file that use WCF. Um, but if this project does not use WCF at all, then this will be like, it's not uh, applicable, no more changes is needed. And this will be complete instead of next step. But here we do have changes to apply and updaters are successfully constructed. So we can start to apply the changes to our project. Here, uh, upgrade assistant is telling us what changes are exactly made. Uh, for example, it was updating the project file, and then when it's updating the uh, configuration file, uh, the max endpoint is removed from the config because the service metadata behavior is configured in the source code instead. Um, and it was updating the directives, source code, and we're writing all those changes back to the original files. And then all the changes are successfully made. We'll just press enter to continue and wait uh, for the last two steps. Uh, and all of those are part of the information are from the logging system in my extension. And it ha also has logging for warnings and failures. So if customers, when they're upgrading their WCF project and have any part that are not applicable, uh, it will show up in the console so they can look into the code base to know what is going on. Great, now it's wrapping up. We'll move to the next project. And everything is done, so there isn't really a next project. Finalize. Oh, so now all the updates are done. Let's see if it's working. The changes are made, so we'll reload the files. Great. One difference we can see is that there's a new file coming up called wcf.config. But before looking at the config file, we'll check out the properties. And now it's on .NET 6 and not on the framework anymore. And in the pro program.cs file, so we can see there's no more references to the system.service model, but it's using core WCF. And when it's setting up um, the host, it's using web application and it's uh, using the ASP.NET Core. And here it's configuring the metadata, service debug behavior. And this is the original code uh, from the bin trader. So even though the extension is changing the code structure quite a bit, as we can see, it's uh, having all those different ways of hosting and configuring their service host. But all the original code from the customer will still 
be uh, preserved. Cool. So WCF, once we've moved to core WCF, it uses ASP.NET Core as the host now, which can run as a console app or it can be an IIS or wherever. And then you're able to reuse the user's code inside of that um, setup in uh, program.cs to still configure the service host the way they need it. Yes, exactly. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, and other part of the configuration are, we can see them are successfully transformed to the wcf.config file. So I'll also open this one. So the wcf.config is basically moving the part with system.service model from app.config to this new file. Um, because a lot of configuration in that core WCF are did in the source code and not in the config file, so uh, behaviors and host are coming up. But other parts, such as the endpoint and the settings for bindings, are still safe here. And now I think we can run this <laughs> to see if it'll really work. Um, no. I'll set it to start for both the client and the server. Start. Great, here we have the server. It's initializing. Cool looks like it's working and it's listening. And this is the interface of the bean trader sample. And this is a project uh, developed by Mike. I, don't, I didn't remember if I mentioned this, um, um, but it's a very interesting um, app. So I can start. Yeah, I actually remote. made this sample back in the <laughs> .NET Core 3 timeframe to demonstrate how to migrate a WCF client over to mm -hmm. .NET Core. And, but now, you know, a couple of years later, we've got .NET 6 and we have Core WCF. And so now we can, turns out, use the same sample to demonstrate the server side, which is great. We can sort of finish that story now. Yeah. So as we can see, I'm signing in and I have a number of different types of bins. I can decide if I want to offer a new trade with maybe 10 red bins and asking one blue bins. And I can create it. I can also cancel it. And now I'll start another client so they can um, trade with me. Take a bit to open this. Client start. Cool. And I will say Mike is trading with me. And as you can see here, Mike can see the trade I previously made and he can accept it. And the number the number of beans he has also changed. Let's see if mine is also updated. Cool, my side, my beans are also updated and Mike can start a trade. Uh, offer 10 blue beans, one green beans. And I can also see it on, on my side. So that's all of the demo, thank you. Awesome. All right. Thank you, Simona. That's that's very cool. So yeah, so there you have it. Upgrading from WCF to core WCF as part of moving from .NET Framework up to .NET 6 or .NET 7, uh, depending on the target you want to pick. And uh, you can do it with Upgrade Assistant, which which makes it easy. I will go ahead and link in the description some, document, some documentation that sort of goes through in detail what changes as you move from WCF to core WCF. But as you can see, um, the Upgrade Assistant tooling helps to make it pretty easy, and that's a great place to start. So um, thank you, Simona, you know, both for being here to show that off and also for your hard work this summer getting that up and running. It's, it's a really useful feature. So uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mike. All right. Uh, happy upgrading, everybody. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>